So let's read the verse and then talk about the verbs that we have here um, in general. Vinyamin, Bene Vinyamin. Oh, Vinyamin. Vayesu na nashin la mis misparam min ha mahol mahol lot. Correct? Mahol lot. Mahol lot. Min ha mahol. Mahol lelot. Mahol lelot. Okay. Asher gazalu. Gazalu. Oh, gazalu. Vayelku vayashuvu el nahlatam vayibnu et haarim vayashvu. Uh, Very good. Yeah, so the word is ha. Okay, let's, ha. let's uh, translate this. Okay, we have Vayasuchen Benei Vinyamin. Benei Vinyamin being the subject, right? The verb is Vayasu, the subject is Benei Vinyamin. Chen. What is chen, or uh, when not following a vowel, that would be kin. What is the word kin? Therefore, so. Okay, so yes, the, the word kin means so or thus. Okay. Um, oftentimes in the sense, in this way, in this manner, in this fashion, so chen, and they did so. They did. This is what they did, right? So that's the word "ken" out of context. In post-biblical Hebrew, this obviously becomes a, a very well-known word in post-biblical Hebrew, but it it changes the meaning a little bit, right? What does it mean in post-biblical Hebrew, guys? Yes. Yes. In in post-biblical Hebrew, it means yes. Um, in, in Biblical Hebrew, it can be used for uh, various purposes. Let's talk a little bit about the purposes of the adverb kin. Okay, the syntax of the adverb, the, the how it is used. So the word kin can be used as a comparison between two things. As, as so-and-so, kin, so-and-so. So, so Showing the um, the comparison between uh, two things, okay. Uh, it can be um, it can be so or thus, as we said, okay. It can be composed of uh, com compounded with other forms, lachen. Okay, lachen with a lamed preposition, or alken, okay, compounded as alken. Okay, so that's uh, ken, and it can allude to something that was mentioned, as in this case. Vayasuchen benei vinyamin, as in, in the previous verses, okay, uh, they find a solution for the problem of the uh, tribe of Benjamin, because the tribe of Benjamin had no, uh, no, uh, had a problem, okay, after the civil war of the concubine at Giv'ah, okay, and the people have sworn, we cannot give our daughters to uh, the tribe of Benjamin, and they find a way to kind of solve the problem, okay, uh, to make sure a tribe is not completely 
uh, completely destroyed, they find um, a way to solve the problem, and that is uh, to do two things. First of all, to marry them with the people of Yavesh Gilad, and secondly, also to say, oh, we are not going to give our daughters to the tribe of Benjamin, but conveniently, our daughters are going to go and have a special dancing in, in Shiloh. And the, when the daughters of, uh, are going to go for that special dance in the vineyard, you should wait and, and ambush the daughters and take them. And so we have not given our daughters. So we have not broken our oath. But you married them nonetheless. So that was kind of a solution not to break the oath that the other tribes have made, and yet to make sure the tribe of Benjamin doesn't go extinct. So according to that solution, they did. And, and let's see. Vais u nashim lemisparam. They married women according to their numbers. You can see that while the Bible, and that is interesting, while the Bible does not forbid, did not forbid, okay, having more than one wife, the standard was definitely having one wife. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you can see things yeah. who are married to more than one wife. But it is not the standard. Okay? The Bible portrays the standard. Therefore, Al Ken, we've talked about the adverb Ken, compounded by Al. Al Ken Yazov. Therefore, a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and they become one. Okay? So again, they married women according to their number. Lemisparam. So if you had 200 uh, sons of Benjamin who did not have women, they married 200 women, not more than that. Okay? Min mecholelot. And now we are getting to the word mecholelot. So, Georgie. What can you tell us about the Mecholelot? Well, here in the note, it is showing dance, uh, dancing around. Right. And, and But the, uh, give me a little more explanation. I'm like, you know, the uh, root word is uh, het, vav, and lamed. But here I find a lot of... <laughs> Yes. Lamed, lamed is repeated. And, uh, right, the Lamed is repeated. Why? Because this is a polel form. Yeah, so, okay, yeah. essentially, the polel, okay, is the equivalent of the piel, just, okay, in the ein vav and the ein ein verbs. So, verbs whose second root letter is a vav as in this case, takes the form of the polel. Okay, let me clarify that further. Theoretically, we should have had, I'm talking about, I'm not looking at this, I'm talking about the basic third person masculine singular of the PL katal. Okay, the basic form of the PL. So in a, in a strong verb, we have something like shiber, shiber. I'm putting the root letters, chet, vav, and lamed. So we would have something like chi, vel. Okay, that would be the pl. But the vav, as you remember, loses oftentimes its consonantal value. And it is only retained as a reading mother. So instead of, in these cases, instead of duplicating the Vav, we are duplicating the Lamed. Mm -hmm. So we get Cho, again, the Vav 
is retained as a reading mother. Cholel. That would be he danced. Okay? Are you with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cholel. Cholel would be the polel form, which, as you remember, is an alternative to the PL. Okay, there are two ways to look at it. We can say it's a different binyan. We can say it is the PL binyan in under certain cases. The distribution of the cases is essentially complementary. What do I mean by complementary distribution? Uh, do you know? Uh, do you know Superman, guys? I just him. You've heard of Superman. Everybody knows Superman? Yep. Very good. Do you know the famous uh, journalist Clark Kent? Guys? Yep. I've heard of You've heard of him as well. They have a complementary distribution. When you see the one, you don't see the other. Okay. okay? For those of you who are not Superman-like fans, Clark Kent is the person, right? That's the, the personality, yeah. right? That's the person, uh, after he gets into the uh, phone booth, he becomes Superman, right? He changes to, to these uh, very tight uh, leotard, and he becomes Superman, right? Me too. When I put on a leotard, I can fly. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so this is complementary distribution. Essentially, between the PL and the Polel, we have complementary distribution. When you see the one, you don't see the other. That is essentially. Obviously, there are, uh, there are more subtle, you know, tweaks to this situation. For instance, on a certain historical layer of Biblical Hebrew, you may find a certain verb that takes the polel, and in Second Temple period, later you can see it takes a PL. It happens. But essentially, these two have complementary distribution, and this is why I usually prefer looking at the PL and the Polel as essentially two, uh, two manifestations of the same pattern. Okay, you, you, these are maybe a little bit too grammatical of a discussion, but that's a way to look at it, okay? So Cholel would be the third person masculine singular of the PL Katal. Okay, now we add the mem at the beginning, which is the preformative letter of the participle in all of the doubled binyanim, that is in the pl pual and hit pael, or polel polal and hit polel, as well as the hifil and the hofal. The mem is added at the beginning. And to mark the feminine plural, we have the ot at the end, because that is the feminine plural ending for nominal forms, right? Mecholelot, and the participle declines like a noun. So mecholelot. Naturally, the question of having the reading mother or not is a matter of... of that is not consistent in oh, this, is the, this is the participle in PL? Right, it is a polel feminine plural participle. You can call it a PL, but it's a polel again, because the root is chet vav and lamed. Okay? Right, has to do with uh, dancing, maybe even uh, shaking, trembling, writhing. From those who are dancing. Right. From those who were dancing, feminine. Those women who were dancing, 
whom they gazalu, whom they have stolen. Okay. Nathaniel, just a question. So, just a second, Georgie. A moment. Yeah. Note that in Hebrew, there is no uh, distinction between the verbs describing the stealing or uh, taking of property objects and the uh, stealing or taking of subjects here. So you can, uh, we don't have here a verb that is distinctively abducted. In English, you would steal a chair, but you would abduct a person, right? You don't steal a person. That's not the normal way of saying it. In Hebrew, the verbs describing stealing, gazal, taking by force usually, or ganav, stealing, are referring to either property or people. Yeah, that would be the same for, for female and male people, huh? What do you mean? If the, are you talking about the object, well, or the stealing, subject? Stealing, stealing um, uh, implies that whatever you stole was someone else's property. I, I don't know. Stealing means you have taken something that is not yours. Yeah, ah, okay. let's take the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. It is uh, tignov. Right, lo tignov. Lo so, tignov. Right. So just the reason I'm mentioning it is that the rabbis have said that, uh, again, you've got the Ten Commandments twice, once in Exodus and once in Deuteronomy. So the Ten Commandments, re the rabbis read the Ten Commandments one, uh, once for stealing property, okay, and another for stealing people okay abducting people okay okay but it's the same verbs that are used in regards to both actions gazal and ganav okay when joseph says i was abducted and i was brought here ganav gunavti me'eretz ha'ivrim i was literally indeed stolen from the land of the hebrews Okay, the same verb as lo tigno, thou shall not steal. Word, the word ganav. Um, we, Made into German, right? In, in Yiddish, yes. And uh, um, in, in it, uh, that Yiddish uh, uh, word found its way into the German language, ganova, into uh, another term for thief. Right, aganev in Yiddish, right? Yeah. And Ganove, that's the same as Biblical Hebrew, lo tignov. Right. And you want to, in, in, in Hebrew, by the way, the term, um, the term can be applied to someone who is, who is um, selling stuff at a very high price, not just to someone who is stealing. And you know what? In the military... When you finish like a, a long march, or when you finish uh, like maneuvers in the desert, and some guy, there are some guys with a truck, like an ice cream truck, they would come to the place where the soldiers finished the uh, marching, okay, and and they would sell the soldiers like a cold bottle of Coke or or ice cream. They are known in Hebrew as gazlan, right? The same as the root here for uh, abducting or stealing. These people are uh, with the pa'alan uh, uh, part pattern. These are gazlan, okay? They so are, the price is more? It, they, it doesn't matter. Even if they sell it for cheap, 
uh, which they never do, by the way. They never do. But <laughs> even, even if they sell it cheaply, they are still known as Gazlan, right? This is a usurper. Uh, it's not exactly a usurper, would be like uh, going, uh, 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 like taking the throne uh, by, by force, right? So, so Gazlan in, in, um, uh, in uh, modern Hebrew, it refers to those like uh, local or uh, vendors like mo those uh, like mobile vendors uh, are called gazlan. Okay. Again, it doesn't matter what are their prices. They're always extremely expensive. But even if tomorrow they decide to, to not take a... Uh, Uh, to, to sell it very cheaply, they are still considered to be gazlan, like this gazlan. That would be the term for a mobile vendor in modern Hebrew. I want to teach you a new word in Hebrew, a very new word, maybe only from the last month. Okay. You might have, I, I don't know if you're familiar with the, uh, with the, uh, English term, some of you might be, okay? Do you know what gaslighting is, guys? Yeah. <laughs> yep. So it's a fairly new term, right? Gaslighting goes back to a movie known as, uh, the, the movie was named Gaslighting, where the husband was trying to drive the, the wife insane by, by uh, you know, playing with our mind, mind games, and, and the term gaslighting became uh, the term to describe trying to, uh, tell, to tell people that they are not in their right mind by subtle changes, like th this is gaslighting. Now, the Academy for Hebrew Language was looking for a Hebrew term for gaslighting. So what did they do and how is it related to what I've just taught, taught you? The new word, really, a uh, very new word, guys. Maybe the last month. I don't know exactly when it was published, but this is really, really uh, new. The word that they chose for gaslighting in Hebrew Again, I don't know that anyone is going to actually use it, but the word that they chose is gizlut da'at. Okay? Look what they did. They went with the root of, the biblical root of stealing that we've talked about, and they said this would be stealing one's mind. And they kept also the sound of gas lighting. Is loot that. Or short for it would just be gizlut. Gizlut. Thus keeping the gas light gas lighting. Okay? Keeping the sound, the good, the z and the l And even the T, gas lighting, gizlut. This is a fascinating phenomenon in modern Hebrew. How sometimes you try to find an original, already existing in the Jewish sources, root or term that would keep both the meaning, be related to the meaning as well as to this sound. Because stealing one's mind in Biblical Hebrew or in Jewish sources means to, to lie to someone. So they just uh, use the phenomenon of uh, transliteration. It, it's not transliteration. It's not that they said, from now we are going to say, Gaz lighting. Okay? They, they did not say, We will transliterate it as gas lighting. No, they kept 
they tried to keep the sound of yeah, the sound the sound as well as going with the original source of the root gimel zayin and lamed that has to do with stealing and with the original sense of stealing one's mind which has to do with lying in jewish sources yeah makes more sense than the english actually because you know what's the connection between gas and lighting right. in and english you have to know that the movie uh that of which this uh term sprung forth was called gaslighting whereas in hebrew it makes sense because you are stealing you something and right you you can understand better what it means because of the term the term having a sense okay genius yes this is really borderline genius mm -hmm. yeah same like when uh, the islam terrorist does something wrong and the common man asks what is this then they will say uh, they got hijacked by the terrorist idea by the what the terrorism idea because it is not there in the quran but they will twist it and make the person do to become a martyr or like to die with the suicide bombing or something I'm not sure I, I follow all of the... No, no, it is like the idea being thrown into one's mind to make uh, okay, new okay. things. Which is okay, so it's a way to influence one's mind. Yeah, so I understand. Yeah, but here it's uh, it has a different sense. So that's the word gazalu. You asked about mecholelot, we talked about mecholelot, but also we got a very interesting discussion of the word gazalu. I can tell you that now with the word gizlut or gizlut dat, this you are getting a very, very up-to-date uh, um, term. Uh, I doubt it that it was published maybe a month ago. Okay? That's the, uh, about th I think this month. I, I actually have to find yeah the publication of the academy for the hebrew language i think from the beginning of this month okay so that's very very we've seen it's amazing for me it's very exciting you can see the biblical hebrew term gazal the root gazal which we again we've seen out of a a verse that georgie asked about the root uh, the word mecholelot and we've talked about the gazla, the fact that you can steal a person in Hebrew. Abduction and, and stealing uses the same uh, root. Ganav or gazal. We've talked about ganav also making its way through the Yiddish to the German. We've talked about gazlan being the term for those mo uh, mobile vendors. And we've even talked about how gizlut or gizlut da'at is keeping both the sound as well as the sense of what is known as gaslighting. That's, I find that fascinating. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> okay, guys. Gene, yeah, I see your hand is up. I cannot hear you. Dean, you're muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Yeah, really now. So you have to repeat the whole thing. Yeah, just simply, we were talking about Polel, and I, and I was asking, is it the same as PL in like, um, PL is, we call it active and double stem. Is it the same nature? Essentially yes. Essentially, yes. This is what we said about the complementary uh, distribution, uh, that PL is the regular form, and for root that have a second root letter, a Yod or a Vav, or what, for roots whose second and third root letters are identical, the regular form becomes Polel. Okay, okay. we have exceptions for that, but, but that's the, the answer, generally speaking. <laughs> 